Hey, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whenever you happen to run into this Truth Bomb Riff. My name is Patrick Lovell. I'm joined by my colleague. Roseanne Rabiola Neely. Hey, it's so good to see you. We had some real good action last night uh, on yesterday's Truth Bomb Riff, man. I got to tell you, after I we recorded that, I was feeling a little bit like, did I lose my mind? But at the same time, I was happy to get it out of my mouth. Well, you know, what do I tell you all the time? I tell you. Patrick, be Patrick, okay? Mm -hmm. Because that's all you can do. I can only be Roseanne. I can't. I can't be anything else. All right. I. Yeah, we hit we hit the nail on the head yesterday because to our viewers out there, and hopefully this will grow, and you can you know help us grow, help us grow your mind, heart, and soul around the uh, truths that we're we're prov we're providing that you can't get anywhere else. It's. It, I know it sounds like I'm doing some sort of like bargain basement sale, you know, at the end of the year closeout or the end of the month closeout kind of thing. But no, I'm serious. What we're providing you is the revelation of of the. It's the largest revelation, and it's truly the only thing that matters because everything that matters to everybody else is connected to what we're talking about. And uh, I gotta tell you, man, you know the key to everything is it's all about yes unity but it's all about energy and what i continue to say and this is where i'm coming from and i i know it with everything i am i've known it my whole life intuitively but i know it now more than ever given the lay of the land and everything that we're talking about is that it's truly the universal truth construct the light has to overwhelm the darkness with energy and when you live in truth, you live in light. And when you live a lie, you're in the darkness. And that's what we're in the midst of. And so we're going to do everything we can in the amount of time that we have to try to get your attention to what we need you to understand. But we think that maybe one of the good ways to do that a pathway is to um, kind of at least endeavor a lot of what people are talking about and then try to back channel yeah. it into everything that we have available. So on that note, Roseanne, tell me what you're thinking today. Okay. Today, my first thought was about unions. Okay. My grandfather, Leo, who everybody called Buck. They called my grandfather, Leo. His name was Bartholomew and they called him Buck. My grandfather was really a, a very funny character, but he was in the taxi cab union in Chicago, okay? So he worked all kinds of crazy hours. So I always had this idea about individual union membership that, I mean, but this is from, I'm talking about the 1950s, okay? Because I grew up with the idea that solidarity, although I never heard the word, but that union membership, the union members were good, honest, working hard people would, would just, you know, what was important was what was important for their family and their neighborhood. Okay. So that's where I come from. So yesterday and today, um, the uh, 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 Teamsters leadership decided they're not going to endorse anybody. They're not going to say Trump. They're not going to say this. They're not going to say uh, Kamala. But within like 18 to 24 hours, um, membership endorsed Kamala as individuals and state chapters. Now, I know what unions have become. Unions have become, there's all these thousands and thousands of members, but the BAs, the, 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 the business administrators, the top guys, Harry Reid was like, you know, would just like tell culinary, Oh, well, this is what you're going to do. That's not union strong. That's not how the unions grew up. I was looking around to see uh, what uh, uh, auto worker guy, Sean Fain, what did he say? 
I've seen where he um, endorsed Kamala. I saw that one time, one time. I haven't, I haven't seen it. But now you got all this little stuff. Okay, let's let's divide and conquer. Okay, let's say uh, this union's doing this, this union's doing that. Unions aren't what they should be. Guess what the operative word is that makes them not what they should be. The operative word is, and I'm going to give it to you, Patrick, the word is corruption. Take it away, my friend. Yeah, it's so cool because I was thinking that while you were saying that. And, um, you know, I was also thinking about the long storied history of unions in this country and the place that you came from and what that mean in your meant that what that meant in your community and so forth but particularly in the 50s right but let's not pretend for example um that was personified by a great martin scorsese film um that only had controversy because of its length uh it probably could have been a lot more quite frankly than they they provided but it was called the irishman and it was about the teamsters right and it was about uh who was the head of the teamsters at that time remind me of his name you know who it's I'm talking Jimmy about. Hoffa. It? Yeah, Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy, Jimmy Hoffa. Hoffa. So, yeah. so, and there was, by the way, there was a presser that was basically enmeshed with that. And my grandfather's name was the presser, but no relation that I'm aware of. Um, but I do remember just off the top, just, you know, a couple of other things. You know, who is the great promoter of Mama, Muhammad Ali and... Uh, Don King. Don King, yeah. Mike Tyson, everything else. He came out of union busting, quite frankly, in Cleveland, just so you know. So he was a head cracker before he got into promotions, which is kind of an interesting sidebar. So when you talk about un unions, you talk about unity, right? You talk about, you know, the the best of a working class. If, for example, that is your state in life and you come up through a family in a sort of white picket fence neighborhood of the 50s where, you know, maybe you're. Your, your father, or maybe your father just returned from World War II, for example, to go work in the steel factories and so forth. And then this built this American dream. There was already a unification with the GIs that just defeated Hitler and fascism, right? I mean, so when we were the last country standing and we didn't have our entire country absolutely destroyed and we were rebuilding the world, the industrial might of the United States was absolutely at its pinnacle. And what made that flow was the union's fairness to create and get people a piece of the American dream. Now, simultaneously, the government was doing it as well, right? I mean, that was the concept. There was, you know, the New Deal that led us into all of these other things, and then we had to go fight World War II, and then we got back into it, and there you go. But, you know, as I'm kind of thinking about what you you presented by way of the Teamsters, A, again, like everything, it's connected to the con, and I'll mention that in just a second, but B, the president of the Teamsters spoke at the Republican National Convention. Okay, so there was already a split, and I'm talking about just a couple of, you know, mo a month ago, right? Oh. And it was ridiculous. It was like, okay, and then thinking back to Sean, F Sean Fain, yeah, and Sean Fain, by the way, was revealing, you know, while he had the microphone and a lot of attention, a lot of attention on him, he was saying a lot of the same things we're talking about, but he doesn't know the details of what we're talking about. And neither do the tens of millions of people out there that we need to reach and we need to reach as fast as possible because, for example, if Kamala Harris is going to create a um, opportunity economy, as she calls it, and as an entrepreneur myself, I like the plan that's like $50,000 um, uh, you know, uh, incentives, tax incentives, things to get things off the ground, those sorts of things. But here's the caveat to that unfortunately that's going to be funded in her own words okay by um pr not private equity uh who are the other guys that are part of the same sort of schematic um gosh darn it, it's right at the tip of my tongue it's the financiers that are part of the system that we're revealing to you but before i go into whole details about that i just want to mention this and i'll let you move on to your next point uh, because i got a lot of my angst out 
in our truth bomb yesterday, which has now uh, been seen by over 20,000 views and counting. Um, but the nature and the magnitude of, let me just close, oh yeah, the con, that you can see at www.thecon.tv. What we revealed and we did live with our front uncle Jay last week is we uh, showed you what the con encompassed, basically taking advantage of everybody in society, but targeting at first the most vulnerable, i.e. widows that lived on pensions that depended on their houses that they targeted to refinance their homes that would ultimately be put into the machine into thousands and hundreds of thousands and millions of mortgage-backed securities that were then sold to pensions, pensions of the white working class. And as we show you, the ARC was built and baked in with nothing but fraud, lies, deception, and all sorts of chicanery, which was criminal in its nature, which we call racketeering, which goes back to your idea of corruption, that ultimately set up the white working class and these unions that had been working for decades and decades and decades for a respectable retirement that they earned throughout their whole lives that were, of course, targeted by this predation of people in the shadows that everybody doesn't understand that devastated them by the millions. And ultimately, we call that financial terrorism. And quite frankly, I always say in my truth bomb, uh, excuse me, on my my. Uh, a lot of times on my tweets, I always say corruption births and fuels fascism. It's that very construction that created, enabled, and quite frankly, um, not only gave opportunity, but gave just huge momentum and strength to the ultimate criminal, Donald Trump, and everything that the Republicans uh, represent at this stage of the game. Corruption burrs and fuels fascism, people. So unless you have the truth and unless you're unified in the truth, you have no weapon against the dark arts, dark arts of deception that create corruption. What say you, my friend? Every time, I, I can't tell people how important it is to watch episode by episode of The Con at thecon.tv each time i watch it i get more and more i i don't care if you start with episode one or five or two it doesn't make any difference you watch it you watch it and it just brings out everything that you patrick have been saying in over 500 truth bombs, okay? See, this is the thing. 525 people, as 525 of today? today? Now, look, people can say, you know, uh, Patrick's talking, this crazy old lady, she's talking. But you know what? If they watch the con, every single person in the con is telling the world what happened validating all the truths that are laid out masterfully by the way by you know eric we don't talk about eric vaughn too much but you and eric right there okay putting it all together if you just watch this, no matter if you're in unions, if you're pink, black, white, yellow, fuchsia, I don't care. If you believe in an American dream, if you're for, I don't care what it is. The, the truth is there, not fabricated, not simply coming out of your mouth or my mouth. Why do we say what we do? Because those people have proved it. Again. Okay, let, let me let me try I, to jump into this real quick, just because we're gonna have to wrap this up. And there's two more points that we gotta we gotta hit. So 
First of all, thank you for that. Uh, yes, I, my longtime partner and the director of the con, I was the producer. I am the producer. I'm a muckraking journalist and a producer, which means I dig, 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 dig. I'm tenacious and just like the uh, tradition. See, we're, we're done, but we're not done because we're going to get our points out here. But that's, we got to really, really <laughs> think about that. So um, Eric is a Michelangelo. He's, a, he's an artist uh, with absolute genius. And Although I've seen the con and I've spent thousands of hours putting the con together, we recently did this live um, interaction with someone who uh, caught us online and wanted to present our findings to his audience and so forth. And um, by the way, we made this for free because all the American people buy or lies, but we didn't make it for free. We spent four and a half million dollars to get a truth that the sum total of the entire government and their agencies that operate north of $90 billion a year with tens of thousands of employees. I'm talking about the Department of Justice, the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, AGs around the country. How do I know that, that weren't able to do for the American people? How do I know? Well, because we discovered all of the top brass that told us so and how that worked mechanically because of what Roseanne so presciently uh, pointed out, corruption, okay? And what it led to, my friends. And so, for example, last night, a lot of people's attention, of course, and justifiably so, was on Oprah Winfrey interviewing Kamala Harris. And I saw just bits and pieces of it. I didn't watch the whole thing uh, because I got a little bit of a grind with, with Oprah, and I'll tell you why. Because if you watch the con, you'll discover that our entire miracle was forged because of a protagonist by an African-American woman by the name of Addie Polk, who was 91 years old, who survived uh, Jim Crow and then um, migrated with the great, what do they call it? The great migration? It was the great migration from the South to the mid, mid, Midwest to work in the factories that then gave her and her husband, Robert Polk, the opportunity to get home ownership, which was huge to the African-American community at that time right up there with Rosa Parks, right up there with some of the greatest names in the history of uh, African-American influence of you say, through courageous influence, that these people had been kind of, um, you know, at that time period and uh, moving forward as a result of other people's sacrifices, right? And so ultimately, Addie Polk winds up after her husband dies in, in a situation where her house was stolen with illegal documents that were forged by a hyena group of criminals using methodologies that the entire system was doing to tens of millions of people. So this poor woman was basically thrown out of her house with an illegal eviction of foreclosure when she owned her house, which left her no choice but to commit suicide at the end of her, uh, uh, at the point of uh, her husband Robert's gun. And it was murder. It was the murder of the American dream. And everything that we discovered that proves the largest criminal conspiracy and cover up in history that never ended, that created the world that we're in the midst of, was a miracle of unprecedented proportions because of we discovered the tragedy of Addie Polk. And once you understand the con, you'll understand that. But what does it relate to? Why does it relate to Oprah Winfrey? Because I was wrapped by Oprah Winfrey's protege's agent, a woman who's a fantastic filmmaker, a woman by the name of Ava DuVarney. You might recognize her name from 13th, which was about, you know, the so-called abolition of slavery, uh, 13th Amendment. But then the revelations of, you know, systemic prisons and systemic racism, that is the new slavery. And that was the juxtaposition. She did that. She also did... Uh, the Central Park Five, a series on HB or Netflix uh, that was uh, really about these these five young African American males that got set up and had their lives destroyed, quite frankly, by being accused uh, wrongly by the police uh, because they wanted to just get a conviction. And Donald Trump played a huge role in that publicly in New York. And so Ava DuVarney reveals all of these uh, horrific stories, but my agent was her agent. And even Oprah Winfrey and Ava DuVarney would not come to the rescue of the millions of people that were like Addie Polk, okay? Which incidentally and coincidentally, someone like Kamala Harris, 
is projecting that she is the protector of. Now, you have to understand that Kamala Harris, as AG of California, betrayed those people. She claims that she didn't, but that's not the full story. The full story is that she played ball with Eric Holder's Justice Department during the Obama administration, who was propped up, uh, among others, by Oprah Winfrey, that ultimately in your town of Chicago, don't forget that when uh, Obama gave that wonderful speech that I bought into and I voted to twice and I'm going to vote for Kamala Harris because of what's going on. But when he said there's no red states of America, there's no blue states of America, there's the United States of America. But then what he ended up doing was putting in power all of the motherfuckers that destroyed the world. OK, and that's what we're revealing to you. And that's part and parcel why we've been quashed by the Borg. Because you've got to understand, and I'm going to, I want you to just do a quick comment on this because I want to jump to something else real quick. And I know I'm bogarting this, but there's a reason why I'm doing it. So, Roseanne, tell me, you're from Chicago. Among all of the great interviews and all of the great book sales and all of these wonderful, uh, sort of, let's say, charismatic sort of elements that our friend, our friend, just America's friend, shall we say, Oprah Winfrey, among all of those accolades and everything else, what else was she involved with in Chicago? When I was in high school, she was involved with putting her studios, the Harpo Studios, right over on Randolph Street, starting the gentrification of that whole area. And I just went there a couple of weeks ago. I hadn't been in that particular area for 30 years. I couldn't believe my eyes. The people were gone, taken up by expensive uh, places to live, uh, beauty shops, restaurants, tattoo parlors. That's what she did. Where did all those people go? The gentrification of a lot of the places throughout the United States is part and parcel to the story that we're revealing because there's a great demarcation mark that that happened. I mean, it's been happening in the country since really the 90s, but mostly from the 2008 great financial crisis because of what we're revealing to you. And again, when I say it's the largest criminal revelation, criminal conspiracy in the history of the world, that never ended. That's exactly what I'm telling you, why everybody needs to understand what we're saying because there is no issue that's not connected to this. Now, in terms of Oprah Winfrey and, you know, to, to try to steer past value judgments and things that are pretty obvious when you're somebody who's part of the elite, when you're a billionaire and you have huge media and you're a king slash queen maker. Again, I'm not against Kamala because things are so out of control and right. because we didn't have you know, a, uh, you know, a standard, uh, you know, uh, election process through all of the primaries and everything else to vet out all of these situations. It was just smash and grab every step of the way. And we have to absolutely destroy MAGA and, uh, and uh, uh, Trump. There's no question about it. But you have to also understand that Trump has been up to his eyeballs and everything that we're revealing to you his entire career. And he is a red carpet reflection of all that we're revealing to you. He is not the causation. He is somebody who played the game the way the game was created, of which he manipulated and, and, and got away with, because the system is that what, uh, Roseanne? It's, it starts with a C. It's that. <laughs> the system is corrupt. We there you go. The system is that corrupt. So let me just bounce to this. OK, so just quick, quick aside in, in terms of what I wanted to mention about, you know, really, I, I'd say the, the primary focus of that, in, you know, interview with Kamala is really the incredibly important issues for women across this country as a result of Dobbs and reversal of uh, Roe. But, you know, I said it when it when it first happened. Why is everybody so surprised this happened? The Heritage Foundation and the billionaires on the conservative side have been after this for at least 30 years, very effectively. So all they had to turn was a few pieces at the highest levels, and they were able to do it. So ladies, how were they able to do that? That would make women bleed out in parking lots and all of this destruction to control your body like you're living in the hand handmaid's tale and all of those other things to put constraints on your freedom and everything else roseanne is it not corruption is it not billionaires that fuel specific ideologies that then supplanted 
the powers that be to work and weasel their way in because of the nature of think tanks and all of these big time groups to be able to basically get Supreme Court justices on the freaking lamb. Are you yep. kidding me? Yep. That's so, all they need. So, so what we've been trying to do, okay. ladies, what we've been trying to do, among other things, is that we've got to create a massive I can't remember what what we call it. Like I always used to see videos where people would just show up um, in like Grand Central Station and do dances out of the blue. What do they call that? It's like uh, it's like this impromptu kind flash of flash mob. Flash mob. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Flash mob. We've got a flash mob with millions of people to surround the Supreme Court, to surround the Federal Reserve, to surround Congress, and to surround. Um, I said the Federal Reserve. DH, okay. the Department of Justice, yeah. and then we have to create a uh, kind of like, a, quite frankly, an exodus. We, we have to show the world, millions of us understand the corruption, that we're united, great idea for the theme, that we're, we're united in truth because we're all getting played. No matter what the issue is, it always comes back to corruption. Now, I'll introduce this real quick and I'll let you run with it. And then I want to try to go into the, to the stuff that we've got to get people to know about uh, each and every truth bomb, which are the four questions and what the principles are of the, uh, the New Deal. But just really quickly. So yesterday, because of my explosion, uh, reacting to what we were talking about and that we've gotten 20,000 views and people are starting to hear us, but not nearly as much yeah. as we need to to break this. We need millions upon millions am i so audacious to think that i'm you know uh the savior that i walk on water and everybody needs to listen to me no the information that we have is that's the truth i'm just the deliverer you can interpret that any way you want but it's the truth it's how our system works when you have evidence when you have a knowledge of the laws when you have the people on the inside to be able to create the indictment slash investigations that then, of course, bring the trial that there has to be a judgment on. Okay, so that's first and foremost. But what we're up against are billionaires like Elon Musk that have absolute overwhelming um, control of airwaves. So, for example, Fox News is corrupt as it, I've ever seen. It's just Rupert Murdoch paid $787 million dollars six months ago, and Fox is still going strong as ever when he admitted in court that their entire business model is to lie and that they made up the whole thing about the Dominion uh, voting booths. Okay, so that's first and foremost. But we saw Elon Musk sitting with Rupert Murdoch at the Super Bowl with the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Philadelphia Eagles two years ago in a press box, and I was scratching my head at the time. I'm like, what are they up to? Well, what they're up to is what they've been doing the last, I don't know, 15 years on the right, particularly very effectively. They're called echo chambers. OK, and that gave birth to when Elon took over what he claims was this effort to create free speech. What he did is he pulled out the page of the of the Trump model, which is to lie, deny, switch the blame and implicate because X is a giant hornet's nest sewer garbage of lies and propaganda that are not free speech that you use. I'd say probably I, I would love to see the algorithm statistics on this if I could ever get on the inside. But I bet there's 10 million lies per second that are being you know thrown out there throughout the world, you know, based on, you know, our topic yesterday that illegal immigrants can go vote without identification and that the Democrats are doing that to create a deep socialist state. What I revealed to you, uh, you yesterday, and I hope everybody spreads the word and we call it hashtag truth is marching, that Elon Musk is the recipient of the deep state socialism for billionaires. What do you think? There's no doubt in my mind, okay? The $71 trillion that has been illegally given to those billionaires and all their apparatuses, okay? Giving no consideration to the law whatsoever the operative word there is illegally he got not only look elon 
is just kind of like not a real bright guy, but you damn well better know that when you're giving him free money, illegally, free, illegal, he's going to want more and more and more. And, and he's going to use it to do this crazy stuff. Look, Elon wasn't this guy the whole time. But what, what we're trying to tell you is people could argue that the, the funds that went to Elon specifically weren't illegal because banks do that because it's part of the game in terms of the way the tax code's written. But how could the banks do it if that, they didn't that's, that's get the it illegal? Okay? That's the clarification. There. But, but, but it's also tax policy and basically – banks loan to those who have the most assets. That's just the way it works. I mean, we've seen this financialization in the United States over the course, going back to the, the, the you know, the, the sort of destruction of unions in our industrial class through four decades of neoliberalism, which created globalism, which created financialization. So everything is a perverted myth of how this or whole you thing- you lie about your assets like Donald Trump did. Yep. So you can get- money from Deutsche Bank That's and right. then go around and freaking sue Deutsche Bank because somebody whispered in Donald's ear, predatory, predatory. I, look. Donald Trump sued Deutsche Bank for being a victim of predatory lending. He made the same argument because he understood how it was how it worked because he ended up getting sued for twenty five million dollars that he paid because he copped to it the same type of fraud at Trump University. This was on a much bigger scale. And by the way, I'm absolutely certain it 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 hatched the whole idea to steal the election using the electoral fraud and the fabrication of um, the electoral college and um, the electoral certifi certifiers to steal the election, which I found out from Rachel Maddow's ultra was not the first time in history that this actually happened. We can thank Steve Bannon for that. I think Steve Bannon knew a lot of this stuff all, all along. But to be clear about uh, uh, what I call the ultimate um, uh, you know, welfare queen, Elon Musk, who's claiming everybody's a communist and a socialist, that guy got billions and billions of dollars of assistance and pump and dump schemes and all of the other elements that are completely connected to what it is that we're revealing, which is the illegal use of what we call Federal Reserve Act 13.3, which was never created to provide emergency lending to a ginormous global racketeering enterprise. That's the con. And there's so much more to it. And it didn't just begin in 2009. It continued through the Trump administration and it continued through the Biden administration. And unless we get a hold of it, it's going to continue forward because Kamala Harris, smartly, would prefer to turn the page and to etch a sketch the last 15 years. We cannot allow that to happen. So what is the question that we have to ask Vice President Tim Walz from every direction, from every corner of America, Roseanne? Well, we got to ask him if he taught through uh, his teaching, his coaching, his being in the uh, National Guard for 25 years. Did he teach his students, the, the kids he came in contact with? Did he teach him that um, billionaires are supposed to? Is, is this why our country was founded to prop up billionaires and billionaire apparatuses? above the law is that what he taught them there's one other piece of that above the law and above what else market forces of course that's right and and and, and you, you already pointed out you're absolutely correct though because see guys this is the inversion perversion of all that we think we are because this is again the con okay so ultimately please tell us um uh, why well i don't want to go into that just yet because it might take too long but just trust Roseanne when she says that we've been providing tens of trillions of dollars to these apparatuses to lie, steal, and deceive the American people because they have complete control of the situation through corruption, puppeteering all of the guys that'll definitely be the pimps, whores, junkies, and parasites um, that are willing to do this. And by the way, I want to comment on Bobby Kennedy and that that woman 
um, whose name I'll, I'll go into in a minute uh, because that's part and parcel of this whole thing um, from the New Yorker who was having an affair with Bobby Kennedy through this whole thing, uh, worm brain Bobby Kennedy. But going back to the, the, the task at hand here, Roseanne, right? So if we did not have a country and a revolution to create the Bill of Rights and the separation of powers and the Constitution, Mr. Walls, did the country want to prop up billionaires giving them tens of trillions of dollars illegally to put them above the law and above market forces so that they could deceive the American people and have absolute control. Is that the purpose of America? Well, obviously it's not. And, you know, Tim Walsh would say that, but we've got to ask him that question over and over and over. What's that lead us to then? What are the four questions, my friend? Well, first of all, you have to look at this relationship between what is qualified immunity when it comes to the police who can go out, shoot people, kill them, and say, oh, I was in fear of my life. I'm above the law. It's okay. What is presidential immunity? And presidents are not above the law. What is the illegal use of Federal Reserve Act 13.3? And what is the electoral college that gives 600,000 people in Montana with a lot of money the same amount of power that millions and millions of people in California have? I thought we were supposed to have one person, one vote. Is that not what we are here for? So... Yeah. I, I, thought you, I, thought you, I thought you delivered that very well, Roseanne. Thank you for doing that. Um, I'm going to kind of reiterate it just because if you, you missed it the first time, but Roseanne's yeah. exactly right. The four questions, guys, like qualified mm -hmm. The bottom line is that I, for one, okay, think the cops have the right to shoot to kill, especially if the situation warrants it. What we're talking about is if bad cops go rogue and decide – Hey, I'm going to go be, you know, like uh, Denzel Washington in, in Training Day, where I'm going to go sell drugs and I'm going to work with the cartels and I'm going to go kill whoever I want with my badge. And then I'm going to say I was actually uh, I killed them in self-defense. That's why we have the law. You have investigations that find evidence. And if there's evidence, then you go to trial with indictments and then you put it in front of a grand jury. That's the system. So when you cut it short by a qualified immunity for the police, do you think that could lead to a lot of innocent people that shouldn't have been shot in the back or wherever they are, especially if it's their skin color? Of course, that's the situation that we've got to undo. Police, like teachers, like everybody in every job and everybody else have to be accountable. That's the whole purpose. If you want to be free in a society, you have to have accountability because the only way that the system can work is when honesty actually prevails, not deception. OK, first and foremost. But, the, you know, as a continuation of that, it's not just qualified immunity for the police. It's judicial immunity at the Supreme Court. What we're seeing through this corruption with Judge Alito and Clarence Thomas, and you can only imagine what's in the Kegerator's past, right? The Kegerator Kavanaugh and, uh, you know, um, uh, and Roberts. Oh, my God, Roberts, who's the chief justice, uh, you know, and I could go on. But it, it, that's the other scenario that we have to sort out. OK, what we're talking about, and especially as it bleeds into presidential immunity. And by the way, if I were Biden as president right now, I'd wage war on the Supreme Court. I'd wage war on um, on uh, Elon Musk and all of the MAGAs and all of the uh, lying, filthy, pornographic, smut, hate, freaks that this carnival of like, again, pimps, whores, junkies, and parasites are. Not to say that the Dems don't have that too. Trust me, they do. They just happen to be typically a, a lot smarter and buttoned up and a lot more clever behind the scenes that you don't see, which is what we're trying to uh, reveal to you, which is why corruption burrs and fuels fascism. I'm convinced, Roseanne, that Trump is this, this like, what do we call him? The whisperer to stupid people, right? He's like, he's the embodiment of stupid people. He's empowered people who don't know how the system works, who can't see anything that are pissed off about the way their lives are. And justifiably so, if they're people that have worked in the system their entire lives only to have their pensions train wrecked, do you blame them? No, of course not, right? So what we're talking about is immunity for power 
that can be corrupt, which is ridiculous. Okay. And that goes for those three. And then ultimately, guys, the only way that all happens is the illegal use of Federal Reserve Act 13.3, which has been going on for the last 14 years. And the reason we throw in, by the way, the um, as the fourth point of revelation to the whole thing, uh, the uh, Electoral College, is because, guys, when Roseanne was talking about Wyoming, she said Montana. Montana's close. Yeah, Montana. but the, the, the reason Wyoming is is important to understand is because of their tax policy, because of the, the Cayman Islands of the Rocky Mountains, right? North Dakota has different ways, but most people of the rich caliber love to conglomerate together so they can talk behind the scenes. And over, uh, I mean, like a huge amount of billionaires per population live in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. OK, and so they have as much of a probably of legislative influence, if not more so than the sum total of the state of California with 50 million people. That's absurd. What they've been doing over the course of and this goes back to um, uh, Bush against Al Gore. And then, of course, in what, two elections now with uh, with, uh, well, one he won against Hillary Clinton, Trump. And then, of course, the other one he lost. But Hillary Clinton had a majority of the popular vote. But yet it was the Electoral College that gave the presidency to Donald Trump. As we discovered, they were using fraudulent uh, signatures to steal in a, in a conspiracy scheme, which was this racketeering investigation that was happening down in Georgia with Fonnie Willis, who got caught up in her own frickin' um, salacial activity. But the bottom line, it, it seems like everybody's involved with this crap, right? But the bottom line, and I want to mention this before you go into the precepts of the uh, the Queen New Deal, just because we've gone over and it might and it's just another point of this whole thing. So Bobby Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, right? He was running as an independent, saying a lot of the right things for a long time. And he had a lot of friends that I admire. Oh, my God. He had Kelly Slater, greatest surfer of all time. He had Woody Harrelson. Uh, I think one of my favorite actors of all time and Christian, did I already say Christian Slater? I did. Oh, I was going to say Travis Rice, the greatest snowboarder of my lifetime. These are people that I admire. Like I put on high, I come from that generation. These guys are the Michael Jordans of their special, their specialty. And oh yeah, by the way, Woody Harrelson partied like a rock star, like I did. I'll tell you, Roseanne, I caught him once stage diving at a really cool punk rock gig in LA at a place called 14 below, but I digress. So, what I'm saying is Bobby Kennedy, this this sculpted God who is 70 years old, who has a better body than I did at the age of 18, believe it or not, still got to figure out what that diet is. Turns out that he is having an affair with this bullshit uh, 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 journalist by the name of, I think it's Puzo is her last name. Let me just take a quick look at it real quick. Um, her name is uh, Olivia Newsy. That's what it is. Olivia Newsy. So they have this they have this uh ongoing uh affair during the election where she's writing these these stories in the New York magazine about how he's a legitimate candidate and she's obviously screwing the guy right so therein lies you know this pimp whore junkie matrix and just as an aside you know the whole time we you know we're we're laughing at him because of his brain worm and he's like you cut off the head of a whale leaving a you know uh, eating a dog and yes. leaving in the central park and all that kind of stuff but but he was saying a lot of the right things for, for a while, but then he goes into La La Land. But this is the ultimate exposure for him, right? From the very beginning for me, for example, one of the, 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 one of the most threatening uh, scenarios of this perverted inverse power that we're all in the midst of is the power of our intelligence agencies. I don't know all about the CIA. I know enough about the CIA to know that there's a lot of really, really significant question marks that have never been flushed out. And it looks to me like if you're a fan of like, you know, I used to watch uh, Jack Ryan, uh, you know, and I've read a lot of those those Tom Clancy books, just like anything else, there's good and bad people in any agency, right? So some are really all about the USA and integrity and others are about corruption. That's what we discovered at the Department of Justice and the FBI and the DOJ or SEC and so forth. There's good and bad, but it's like, who has the power? Well, unfortunately, over the course of the last 15, 20 years, it's been the corrupt that have absolute power. And so this 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 guy, you know, Bobby Kennedy comes in riding, you know, off the coattails of exposing that the CIA murdered his uncle Jack and his dad or, you know, he said that about Jack. And then there's questions about Bobby Kennedy, his father. Right. Both. 
as high in our sort of uh, esteem as it goes for the Democratic Party, particularly, but just leaders in the United States history. And there's a lot of questions that come out of the JFK assassination that last 50 fucking years, by the way. But the bottom line is, this is what I'm also trying to tell you that relates to the con. So Bobby Kennedy comes out and he's like, yeah, we're going to expose what happened at the CIA. And then, of course, Trump's picked up on that, right? He's telling all of the MAGAs out there, yeah, I'm going to expose how the CIA uh, assassinated JFK. Did he do that, Roseanne, the first time he was in office? No. No, what he didn't. He lied. What he lied. He lied. But here's, but here's the symmetry of where it, it hits a smack dab in the middle of everything that I'm revealing to you, which is the biggest aspect of all of this, right? So the law firm that gave birth to the CIA is known as Sullivan and Cromwell. They've got a very storied past. They've been very involved with the matrix of power between D.C. and Wall Street, going back to obviously before the CIA, right? But since the CIA, they have simply been the shadow power. Now, why that's funny as it relates to Bobby Kennedy, while he's got all of these other problems and he's saying he's going to protect the middle class while he's cutting off the hedges of, you know, uh, whales and whale juice on the car with his kids getting splattered in the face, just ridiculous, asinine stuff. And then cheating on his wife, Cheryl Hines, who a lot of us think is really quite special. And, you know, it, all of this just disgusting behavior. He doesn't even know that, for example, as he champions crypto, he doesn't even know that Sullivan and Cromwell had their general, a general counsel from their law firm as the general counsel of FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried, which was a large crypto fraud that the government took down. And so the idea that Sullivan and Cromwell would have somebody on the inside as the top attorney at a crypto situation, in addition to other information that I have, as it relates to... <laughs> Russia and crypto and laundering for all sorts of international crime syndicates. These are the people that are involved with the Trump candidacy, with the Trump presumed to be administration. Who are they getting paid for, for whom, by, and why? And ultimately, when you look at what they did after Trump, uh, you know, was supposedly a, uh, another assassination attempt from some loon that the right's trying to say was, you know, a spook that was, uh, you know, put into position by the CIA. What they're saying is that they, they came out after that this week on Twitter, and they basically had a symposium sales with Trump and Elon Musk, who's central bank digital currency, my friends, and that's a whole nother story. And, uh, you know, I think Bobby Kennedy was involved in others, but it was a symposium for crypto. You know, Trump is hucking true social. He's hucking Bibles. He's hucking sneakers. He's hucking this and that and the other while he's out running the law and then also cheating with him, uh, Laura Loomer and all of these other things. It's just insane. Okay. So on all of that, I'm sorry, I, I, I carried on. It's, it's hard. Once you get going on these stuff, you know, Roseanne, there's just so much that has to come out of your mouth. But it's all a fraud. It's all deception. It's all what Roseanne said brilliantly, which is corruption that is enabled by those four questions that we started off uh, just a few moments ago. And so that leads us to ultimately the precepts of the Clean New Deal. Please take us home, Roseanne. And the first one is we have to recreate a modern day Glass-Steagall Act. You've got to separate that commercial banking from investment banking, you don't go playing around with other people's money. Then we have to end frickin'. Really quickly, by the way, just really quickly, d d folks, what d we learned the lessons out of the Great Depression that we cannot have cons casino predatory vulture capitalism. That's called crime. That's what the mob does. So how do you stop the mob? With the law which creates the new untouchables, which is what we're all about, okay? So just when you understand, when you hear Glass-Steagall, just know what that means. It's ending casino predatory vulture capitalism. And then you have to end Citizens United, okay? All that is, is legalized corruption by all this dark money that, oh, okay, number three, we're, we can absolutely, definitely show you how 
$1.5 trillion and counting was looted illegally by our wonderful financial system that we're supposed to trust. We're supposed to trust, okay? Eddie Pope trusted the system. Well, who everybody trusts the system. That system betrayed our institutions to just prop up those billionaires and all their rhymes. Don't ever call it shenanigans, ever, ever, ever. And don't say it was unethical, but it wasn't illegal. Okay. Perfect, let me just pick up on that real quick because you absolutely nailed that. Um, look, guys, what you need to understand is that this, this notion of legitimacy, okay? Yes, there are very smart, clever people that go to Ivy League schools that come from very wealthy families that go and work in penthouses sorry, corner offices, C-suites for the world's largest financial institutions that we all look at the black limo that they arrive and they go to their fancy lunches and they go to the, you know, they go to Aspen retreats and they go to, you know, Jackson Hole and they go to, you know, uh, the Caribbean on vacation with their family and all over the world, right? People, what we have discovered is that they're freaking mob bosses, they're mob bosses at a level that Don the Khan wishes he could be. Now, there's a lot of evidence and there are some thoughts that Donald Trump skimmed up to $1.5 billion during his first administration. And that comes directly from David K. Johnston, I think the, pre the, the preeminent uh, journalist on, on uh, Donald Trump. You could go into the New York Times and all the tax stuff and everything else, but David K. Johnston really uh, nailed that. But Guys, Donald Trump, the whole story of Donald Trump is, quite frankly, a little dick syndrome, okay? The guys always wanted to be the man, but he's an idiot. And so they never let him, let him in, the, in, in the gates. So he goes and builds his own corp, uh, corruption in his own gates, and that's Mar-a-Lago and all the rest of it. But what he's been doing are the small versions, as big as he is, as small version of what we're revealing to you. I promise you guys, all of the stuff that he's gotten involved with, with the 91 indictments, the 34 criminal convictions, all same, follow the same path of what we're revealing to you, led to a $71 trillion backdoor to all of these son of a bitches that have complete control. And by the way, Elon Musk is one of them. So is there better ways, Roseanne, that we can spend $71 trillion? Yeah, you know, we could, we could uh, redo our entire grid so that we could... Number one, we could get off of fossil fuels, use renewable energies. We could give people jobs where they are. They don't have to move all over the freaking country. That would be the opportunity economy. Not, not, not okay. getting financed by the guys that are part of the system that we're talking about. Private, no, I didn't get, no venture capital. Venture capital is who, who uh, Kamala is saying, oh yeah, all of these guys that have been basically destroying everybody behind the scenes, we're going to depend on them to fund the opportunity economy. Oh my God. We don't have to do that. That's, we don't have to do that. Okay. We can also give everybody Medicare for all because even the most outrageous prices I've seen. Okay. I've seen where it might cost around 10 trillion to do Medicare for all. I've also seen it costs between 20 and 35 trillion. So who do you believe? You know what though? Add those two together and you still got room. You got room for a whole room. Lot room. You got, you got, I mean, that's, that hasn't even scratched the surface. I, between the, the rebuilding of the energy grid is probably about $7 trillion if we did it efficiently. And there's going to be a lot of, you know, overages and lead tape and like, you know, all the, what do we call it when, uh, you know, it's, it's like the fat in the system, you know, even at its worst, that's like $7 trillion. I think Medicare for all is somewhere in the $9 trillion trillion dollar range and you know so what are we talking 16 trillion dollars compared to 73 but that's for like hundreds of millions of people what we're talking about guys is this 71 trillion dollars that we this isn't me blowing this out of my ass okay we know the numbers we know where they came from when they came from how they came from how they got back channeled how they got back channeled illegally because of our work in the con at www.thecon.tv and more importantly at this stage of the game that we have completely in our uh 
website, www.thecleannewdeal.org. But again, Roseanne, I mean, come on, man. This is, you know, when, when people talk about Armageddon, when t- t- people talk about the end of the world, about the battle between good and evil and the wicked versus the righteous and all of those biblical kinds of things, people, what I'm telling you is just straight up that based on the information we have, okay? And the truth is all you need to understand, which is going to quash everything else that's quashed the truth because we gave $71 trillion to maybe, maybe, I'm going to say 300,000 people tops. I haven't done the, the numbers on it, maybe closer to 100,000. We're talking the financial system. We're the recipients of this, and so were the billionaires. Now, does it make sense? Now, does it make sense that, you know, the, the, something's rigged and everything is, uh, you know, uh, a rigged game and, and there's corruption everywhere? Now, do you understand that there's a methodology to the madness? So, yeah, Roseanne, there's a way that the United States can redeem the dream and come out of uh, the, the misery of tyranny to create and then unleash uh, the uh, renaissance of possibility. And that's called the Clean New Deal, my friends. Please continue. And that can be for all the people, not just segments of the society okay right because why because what did donald trump not donald trump what did elon musk say that the democratic party is doing with all of the illegal Im- immigrants for yeah Russia? he's getting them to register to vote give me a fucking break okay. to create a deep state a deep state of socialism yeah. that's what he said what we're revealing to you is the deep state of socialism for the criminals that destroyed the world we don't need that so what we also need to do is we got to expand the Supreme Court to 13. And we have to have not only have a code of ethics, we have to enforce that code of ethics. So those corrupt justices can be prosecuted. Then we have to end qualified immunity. We have to and presidential immunity and and the electoral college and i've seen pe- people picking up on pieces the last one i just saw a little while ago and the electoral college so i give them in in their uh reply to their tweet i give them all of the precepts okay folks what do you not agree with? What I, is it? I agree. My friends, we've seen this movie a million times, okay? It's Indiana Jones and the, the Raiders of the Lost Ark because this story is the Ark of the Covenant. It's the Matrix, okay? It's, it's uh, you know, Harry Potter. It's good versus evil. I mean, it... it the, the, the person whose name we can't say is this system, okay? Because if you remember, Voldemort actually had the education and the banks and, you know, uh, you know uh, what, what was it? The, uh, the bureaucracy of the Ministry of Magic and all that. Th- those are all basically depictions of what we're, we're talking about, okay? And Game of Thrones and everything else. And, and if you're a Game of Thrones fan, really the whole object of the Game of Thrones was to get the Iron Throne so that you had the Iron Army, so that you had the Iron Bank. That's the trifecta, which means that if you sit on the Iron Throne, you're the king or the queen, which means you're an aristocrat, okay? What was the United States born out of? Was it born Governor Walls to be able to prop up billionaires above the American people where we give them free money illegally so that they could be above the law and market forces while deceiving the American people? Jesus Christ, people. Jesus Christ, do you, I'm sorry, I, for all of you who think Jesus is the Savior, what would Jesus do? Seriously, what would Jesus, would Jesus, would Jesus be of Donald father? Trump's Mar-a-Lago? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I we could go on and on, and we went way longer than I wanted to, but I'll finish off with it. But before I finish off, I, I want to give you a closing uh, comment, um, because you really did that masterfully. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. But listen. Why do I do this? I got to tell people why I do this. I have no other agenda except to have a better place for people to live. I don't want to see people dying and struggling and getting massacred and having their children killed and people dying in prison 
and people not being able to afford houses. I don't want that, okay? I look at the big picture. You see this picture? You see those two hands behind me? That's what I do. I have, that's the food part that I share. And on the other side are the facts, the Clean New Deal. All it takes, people, is your time. That's all because, in my mind, and it's never going away, failure is not an option. I love that, and I love that's what you do. Roseanne has been a um, godsend for me. I would have given up on this a long time ago had it not been Roseanne, but we have, we have created an extraordinary website to where the powers that be cannot take this away from the American people. She's right. Failure is not an option. There's too much on the line. I mean, we're talking about we're the savior of democracy. We're actually the savior of capitalism. <laughs> you know, just like FDR said, because my theory in ideology, it's not a theory. It's just the way things are. It's almost like MMT in terms of the description of what things are. So our government isn't pure anything. OK, we have the police. We have the fire. We we, we have, you know, uh, Fire companies, whatever you want to call them, firemen, whatever, uh, you know, the military, teachers, uh, guys that work on construction to create in infrastructure projects around the country and everything else that are part of the real economy and, and maybe a driver of the real economy. You know, that is socialism. OK, because, yeah, presumably the taxes pay for it. But what what it really is, is it's financed by Only statewide. Right. Yeah. Well, federally, we could get into all of the different composites, but but. The, the United States has to be elastic. It has to have enough room because it's a huge, powerful, innovative, brilliantly constructed co uh, a country where, yes, you do have to have financial incentive. You have to have people always discovering new and better ways to move forward. That is the whole idea of the United States in order to form a more perfect union. And of course, the union itself, going back to the beginning of our conversation, is always a lot more difficult than, quite frankly, a lot of guys that can create new shiny freaking, you know, C and E, fill and E sort of solutions, right? Whether it's technology, which a lot of the times is a complete contradiction in terms of making the world a better place. In fact, all of these things can happen behind the scenes because of high speed trading and because of capital flows, thanks to technology that nobody can keep up with. And by the way, we should make that a precept of the uh, Clean New Deal is, and it kind of goes without saying, is that we have to reconstruct the regulatory body to hold corruption accountable. That would come out of really a new glass steagle, right? I mean, we already have the laws, we already have the people, but we have Sorry, we have people that played ball because they wanted to protect themselves and their paychecks more than the law. That's called corruption. So where am I going with this and where can I uh, pull the, the, the ripcord to bail out of here? Let me, let me just think of it like this, okay, guys? For me, it's always the same thing. Again, the universal truth is about the force of light overcoming the darkness with energy there's a lot of ways that happen okay there's literally dark matter in the universe and there's literally light and anybody who remembers that what's the opening statement of the bible or the torah and probably the same with the quran let there be light right that's what that's what creates the the ability for it all to happen not to mention reproduction i mean it's almost the same kind of big bang sorry to use that analogy but really i mean it's almost ridiculous that the universal truth is springs forth from the energy of the world to come into existence. And yeah, it's as cliche as it may sound, you know, everything is the force, right? And so for people of my generation, you might remember growing up with Luke Skywalker delivering in the very first uh, Star Wars, which is the third book in the trilogy, but when he delivers the photon bomb by getting inside the force against the evil empire of darkness, right? That's what that's what this is, guys. This is the unification of the rebellion against the corruption that has perverted and demented and destroyed everything we think we are. If it hasn't come through just yet, if you've ever heard of a priest raping children in a uh, church, 
it's got a similar situation. It's perverse. It's when you give somebody too much power and absolute power corrupts absolutely, you end up with absolute evil. That's not who we are. We are a force of good. I know we are more than than all of the Z Kyle uh, red hat made in China, uh, you know, basically uh, rallies with this idiot who's just a lying scumbag that they all know. Right. I said the other day in a uh, in a um, post on Twitter, I said, look, do we not understand that those people who are there do not give a rat's ass about the law? They do not give a rat's ass about anything except for white supremacy. OK. And so Kamala Harris is the only choice for it. But Tim Walsh is the opportunity that Eric Holder made a mistake of putting an honest guy that close to power because if millions of us corner him with these revelations, I don't think he can lie. I really don't. I don't think he would lie. I think he would roll his eyes. I think he'd try to avoid the subject. But if we cornered him, there's no way that I think he would in public, because I do know, for example, that when he was a representative, he was vastly against what we called the TARP uh, bailout program of the banks back in 2008. That was just the beginning of what we're talking about. That was just a drop in the bucket. That was $700 billion. And Walsh was very much against that, as were a lot of people in Congress. But they bent over. They did it because we backdoored, ultimately, tens of trillions of dollars illegally. So what this all means is simply, when you live in truth, you live in light. When you lie, you are depraved. When you live in truth, you're bulletproof. You become Superman or Superwoman. You become a superhero, not a make-believe billionaire douchebag like Elon Musk who fancies himself Tony Stark. That guy's not Tony Stark. He's the anti-Tony Stark, okay? And when you live in truth, you've got the power of the universe on your side, okay? That's what you have to be. You've got to be a nuclear reaction to the truth, the uh, the Big Bang of Truth, which you can find at uh, www.thecleannewdeal.org. Both of us are available anytime you want to reach out. We would love to build an army as fast as possible. Guys, you got to think of it as the end of the world because it is. But it's also, and I mentioned this in my Truth Bomb Riff about 13, which means transformation, redemption. It's the opportunity to be reborn, my friends. And this is the renaissance of possibility if we get this right. We can do this, the operative word being together.